I am Slasher, and this is my way of playing Enchantress. Enchantress is usually seen in the jungle role, either farming there or ganking whenever you get a decent neutral creep. But she is actually really strong in the early laning stage, and downright imba if the enemy rely mostly on physical damage. I like to go solo offlane with her. Now the offlane is the most free to experiment lane in the game, and that is one of the main reasons I go there whenever I want to play a hero differently. The offlane also suits Enchantress quite well. The most important thing an offlane needs is a way to prevent being harassed and zoned out of lane. Clockwork has battery assault, Lashrak diabolic edict and so on. With Enchantress passive, giving a 40 attack speed reduction at level 1, you can easily trade hits with the enemy supports. For example, a witch doctor tries to zone me. When I get him down to 50% HP, he has only gotten me to around 80%. And you also got a heal, which will heal you completely. The only thing she's lacking for the offlane is an escape mechanism, but since she has a base move speed of 335, that isn't really a problem. I start off with 3 circlets and 4 tangos. Since circlet cost has been reduced by 20 gold, it is now possible to start with these items. Having a null instead of the circlets would give you 3 more damage, but you would be less tangy. This build simply allows us to harass and trade hits more effectively. As always, when you are offlane, be sure to ask for one observer ward to place close to their pull camp, so you can see when they try to gank you. Then hurry back to the lane to block. If your team is strong, you may also want to try contest the bounty rune, since Enchantress high move speed makes her pretty decent at level 1 fights. At level 6 in the offlane, you can sometimes kill the enemy carry with your ultimate, or at least force him to stay completely off the lane. The problem with jungling enchantress is that, even if you do manage to get some ganks off, you are usually just trading farm with the enemy team. I think it suits the hero better to be laning and try to avoid having the enemy carry farm, since enchantress usually isn't that great late game. I skill my passive at level 1, and then max out my heal, and then my passive. I get ulti whenever possible. You can get 1 point in enchant at level 4, but I prefer just staying in lane harassing and farming. So enchant isn't really needed until later, when I start pushing and ganking. It can be quite dangerous trying to leave the offlane to get a neutral creep. If they don't have a lot of physical damage, you can consider just getting 2 points in your passive, and then maxing enchant. Enchant max slows for 50% for 5.5 seconds, which is quite good. The first item I get is boots, and then I will go Necronomicon, usually getting the belt of strength first. Economicon works well on Enchantress, since you have a slow, and you are also tanky enough to stay alive without any more items. Also, when you fight, people will usually go up in your face, making your impetus spears damage, which depends on the distance between you and your enemy, only do like 5 damage, compared to something like 105 if he is running away from you. So with Necronomicon, we make the decision hard for the enemy. Go up in our face, and my minions will pound away at you while draining your mana, or keep away from Enchantress and our spears will do quite a lot of damage. And if they try to flee, we have a 50% movement speed slow to catch them. When I started playing Enchantress, I would rush an Aghanims, but that item really doesn't do that much for her. It just increases her range a bit and gives some nice stats. But the problem with the range is that you really can't punish people if they go close to you, and it can be quite hard to get away from them, and then dealing a lot of damage with your impetus. Especially late game, it sometimes can be hard to deal a lot of damage with your impetus, since if they just get close to you, your damage goes down a lot. Nico also allows you to push quite early, and together with a few neutrals, your pushing power is really strong. I've had some games where we took Throne at around 20 minutes, because I managed to shut down their safe lane completely, and my team also did well in their lanes. If you're having a hard game and they have a lot of burst, it may be worth getting two bracers before finishing your Neko book, to be able to survive the initial damage and get your heal off. Especially against heroes like Krop, this can be necessary. After having finished Neko book 3, you can go a lot of different items. Usually a support item for your team can be a good idea. So if you want to push and they have a lot of physical damage, I can get a Vladimir's for my team, or Pipe vs Magical. You can also consider getting a Garnums at that point, or perhaps Hex or Orchid, depending on what is needed. Right. Remember when playing Enchantress this way, we are trying to shut down the enemy as much as possible early on. If you manage to dominate the offlane, 
Keep farming for your Necrobook and try to take their tier 1 tower as fast as possible. When you get your Necrobook, start pushing their towers. Enchantress late game is much less strong than she is early and mid game. Be sure to check out my steam guide I made for Enchantress, which you can use in game. There is a link in the video description.